This right here is the IQ Z5, which is one of the best phones that you can buy under rupees twenty five thousand. Sure, it does come with an LCD panel over the much preferred AMOLED panels out there, but I mean it's not a bad panel by any means. And the phone is one of the most serious performers out there, whether it's performance or camera or battery life. But should you pick this over all the other options in the market? Well, let's find out. This is one from Guiding Tech Reviews or GTR, and you're watching my review of the IQ Z5 after an entire month of usage. Let's get started. All right, so let's kick things off by talking about the design here. And okay, this looks very, very good on camera, and I will not deny. I mean, even when I first took it out of the box, this looked very unique to me. But the problem with that is it's mostly looks, but does not really translate to great ergonomics. I mean, okay, it's a two-fold process. I mean, if you talk about the edges and everything, yes, they fit perfectly in your hands. But this back texture, as good as it looks on camera, is super slippery. I mean, yes, the light reflects off it amazingly. You have this rainbowish color effect here that looks very cool. I mean, it's a device that you would love to flaunt with your friends. But when you actually start using it, it's a very, very slippery phone. And add to that, this thing is not lightweight. I mean, if you compare it with AMOLED phones in the same budget, this thing is quite heavy. I mean, this thing weighs about 193 grams. And add to that, that slippery texture. And I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. This thing does slip out very easily. So yeah, that is one slight con that I have with the design. Now, other than that, the frame is plastic, but like I don't really care much about that because it's still quite durable. You do get a 3.5mm headphone jack here, which is nice to have. I mean, if you have a good pair of wired headphones, that is always a good thing. Now, one more thing that I wanted to talk about is the vibration motor here. Now, that's a feature that most OEMs used to just neglect upon or didn't really care about much. But recently, we started seeing manufacturers focus a lot on the haptics, and okay. Here's the thing. Now, if you use this daily for typing and everything, the haptics do feel slightly soft as compared to other phones. But at the same time, they're quite refined. I think that's also because this thing comes with a 4D game vibration motor, and obviously that helps while you're gaming, which I'll talk about in the performance section. But for normal day-to-day -day usage, that vibration might feel softer if you compare it with other phones. But at the same time, it just feels a bit more smoother. The problem with that is if you put this phone on silent vibration mode, the vibration can be a little soft and you might not notice the phone vibrating in your pocket. So there's that. Also, we have the side mounted fingerprint scanner, which is embedded inside the power button. And if I'm being very honest with you, that is the design that I prefer the most. It just sits perfectly on your thumb. And yeah, I do not mind that. I don't see that as a con. But what I do see as a con is the fact that this thing does come with an LCD panel. Okay, now let me be a little clear here. It's not like the LCD panel here is bad. In fact, this is one of the best LCD panels that you can get on the market right now. It is HDR10 rated and has DCI-P3 white color gamut, which is amazing. I mean, if you're someone who edits photos on the phone, the color accuracy here is something that you would love. You also get 120Hz of refresh rate along with 240Hz of touch sampling rate, which is great for normal day-to-day -day usage as well as gaming. While all of that sounds great, my biggest complaint is still the fact that LCD just does not look as good as AMOLED does. I mean, like I said, LCDs are definitely far more accurate, but AMOLED panels are just better to look at. They are also, let's not forget, much brighter. So phones that come with AMOLED panels are better to use under direct sunlight, while the Z5 kind of struggles when you try and use it outdoors. I mean, just to clarify, I'm not saying that the Z5 has a bad panel. Like I said, it has one of the best LCD panels out there in the market, but when you talk about phones under 25,000, you can easily get phones with AMOLED panels with high refresh rate at that price bracket. So why you would go for LCD is a bit of a con here. I mean, obviously a phone is much more than just a display. So there are other things to be considered. So let's talk about them. Starting off with a camera. Now in terms of specs, you get a 64 megapixel primary shooter with an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel depth sensor along with a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Specs aside, the actual performance is uh, actually far better than I expected it to be. You get a good amount of HDR here 
and while the camera leans a bit towards natural shots it does like in terms of photo processing does tend to slightly saturate things it's not over saturated by any means and most folks will like the shot but at the end of the day you do have to edit these photos which once again is good because the display is color accurate so if you do plan on editing your photos i mean it's going to be a good package altogether however if you're someone who likes to click photos and just directly share them on your social media or somewhere else and just don't want to go through the process of manually editing them a lot then this is not the camera for you also for selfies i think iku has their work cut out for them it just goes to show that megapixels aren't everything the phone is just smoothing my face texture quite too much even if i have all the beauty modes turned off so yeah Uh, as for this front camera i could definitely need to make some improvements but yeah on the whole it's not a bad camera package at all as for videos one thing that the iq does is that its ultra steady mode goes all the way up to 1080p 60 fps while most phones just do it at 30 fps and the footage is quite stable and add to that the fact that it's 60 fps the footage looks very smooth as well now moving along we have the os here which is funtouch os based on android 11 Vivo's Funtouch OS used to be one of those skins that I absolutely hated and in the recent times they have just improved so much that I have absolutely fell in love with them. Like to the point where I genuinely do not mind using a Vivo phone. Like usually the OS used to be the deal breaker for me. Right now I actually enjoy using the OS here. It is obviously customized but it is still reminiscent of stock Android. And yeah, I mean, I do not have any problems using this phone per se. You still get a ton of features here. You get great battery optimization. You get a lot of customizability features. All of that's good. One slight complaint that I do have is there's a lot of bloatware, like a ton of bloatware. Of course, all of that is uninstallable. But the fact that this phone does come with them is something that we need to highlight, considering we do that for all the other phones as well. So yeah, even though the bloatware is uninstallable. I would have preferred it if it wasn't here in the first place. Now complementing the software is the hardware here and the Snapdragon 778 chipset is a very good processor. But the highlight feature of this phone is that it comes with LPDDR 5x RAM. That's a first in this segment especially. I mean, as a first in the market right now, but especially for a smartphone in this segment in India. So yeah, and the performance on this has been absolutely great. Now the IQ brand is definitely targeted towards gamers for sure. And I mean the Z5 is definitely great when it comes to gaming performance. Games like Call of Duty and uh, Battlegrounds Mobile India, they all work flawlessly on this and turning them on to very high frame rates. I mean the gaming experience on this is damn good. It's it's one of the best gaming phones that Bunny can buy in this price segment. Obviously the direct competitor to this would be the Poco X3 Pro which is definitely priced a bit well, not a bit but quite cheaper than this and it comes with the Snapdragon 860. So if you'd like to see a comparison video of both the phones let me know down in the comments below. But as an individual identity the Z5 is great. It keeps the thermals in check. The performance is great and I mean obviously gaming performance one thing but even day to day usage has been flawless on this thing. Now lastly there's the battery life and this thing comes with a 5000 mAh battery with support for 44 watt fast charging. Now I won't deny the fact that I've said this in multiple reviews Prasna like Realme have spoiled me for choice because that 65 watt charging is something that I kind of expect to be a norm especially if you're talking about phones above 20000. Yes Realme offers that under 20000 as well but If you're talking about phones above twenty thousand, that is something that I expect to be a basic requirement now or days. So yeah, forty-four uh, watt does seem slightly slow in comparison to sixty-five watts, but that's a very specific comparison. For a normal user, forty-five watts is more than enough. You will absolutely love the charging speeds here. As for battery life itself, the phone easily lasts me an entire day of usage, no issues whatsoever. All right. So the big question is the iQOO Z5 worth it? Well, it's not a bad phone for sure. It's not a bad option either to consider. But is it the best phone under twenty five thousand? Certainly not. I mean, there are great options out there, so it definitely has some competition cut out for itself. If you can spend a bit more, the Galaxy M fifty two is a very good choice out there. I think Ashish reviewed it on the GT Hindi channel, which you should definitely check out. And yeah, I mean, even I have tested that phone and. 
the panel that thing packs in is amazing everything else feels good it has the same processor so that's good uh, for the same price for about 25000 you also have options like the realme x7 max uh, i mean if you can spend a bit more then you also have options available in, towards gaming like the poco f3 gt which are again great or the newly launched realme gt neo 2 which is available on a very massive discount right now now if you're someone who does not really mind the lcd panel and is just buying the whole phone for the experience well like i said you can still check out the poco x3 pro one thing that uh, the iqoo is better in compared to the x3 pro is that this is still lighter the x3 pro feels like a brick and that is one problem that i had with the phone like i said it's not like the iqoo z5 is a clear winner under totally 25000 but if you go with it it's not a bad phone at all i mean i've been really enjoying using it yes i still do not love the panel here because my personal preference lies towards amoleds but i mean if you've never experienced amoleds before and you're fine with lcds go for it it's not a bad phone at all and i can easily recommend it and well that was it if you found this video helpful make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content also like i said let me know in the comments below if you would like to see the comparison of the iqoo z5 with the poco x3 pro or any other phone till then this is one from gdr and i'll see you in the next one